Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today we hit our next major story beat. We found our missing Agra world, Janus, and uh, apparently absolutely nothing is wrong here. Everything's fine. I'm sure that'll absolutely be the case, and we will not be ambushed shortly after landing. There's certainly not a trend of that building up. Yeah, that's fine. Oh dear. We've got an Eldar sniper. A lavishly dressed noblewoman in an opulent silk gown watches you with an expectant air, but then gracefully bows her head. Gem-encrusted implants protrude from her arms and neck. I welcome you on behalf of the noble house Vyat Ab Aram. My name is Vistenza Janus Vyat Ab Aram of Caronus. By the grace of the Emperor and the will of rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, I serve as planetary governor and Imperial Commander-in-Chief of this world. Vistenza Vyat raises her head slightly. In truth, your arrival in the place of the esteemed Lady Von Valancius is quite unexpected. Yeah, we should probably play this one close to the best until we know what's going on here. I hope my coming in Theodora's stead has not disappointed you too much. Not in the least, your lordship. On the contrary, I am delighted after all these years to once again welcome to my world... For Janus! Oh, my. Ow. Also, that is an excellent example of why you should not surround someone before you open fire. These are not professionals. But speaking of professionals... Uh, apparently, the local leader has an Eldar bodyguard, which is very interesting. It certainly bears further investigation, but we are slightly preoccupied at the moment. Though, not for long. This, this actually looks very straightforward. Did not go as planned. All right, Heinrichs, how about you? Nice, 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 nice. Let's see to it. Would have been nice if we could get two kills, but these guys aren't exactly clustered up. Oh, hey. <laughs> that, that, well, that works. And we've got wave two. Not such a simple encounter after all.
Wow. Okay, so that uh, that Eldar Ranger is still providing cover fire. Gotta say, I am uh, starting to suspect that might actually be our Eldar companion. The one shown on the main key art. I did hear she was in the current alpha, so that'll be fun. One down. And we need to trim that closer guy. But let's get defenses up on Argenta. She burned her own cover. That is a very nice looking rifle. Cassie. We'll have you move Argenta. Isn't this a job for the Serbs? If I may. First batch is done. Argenta on the move. And that is a much better spot for her. Pascal enters the fray. Looks like that agility boost we gave her really worked out. Nice. And gas on the flank. Far enough away from the uh, main party that we don't really have to worry about it, though. Also, he, he literally just pushed Pascal out of the gas, which I, uh, I do appreciate. Okay, we need to lighten the pressure on Argenta, I think. She's not going to be able to do much if we don't clear some of those guys off her. Fingers crossed. Well, crap. I was really hoping we'd get a kill. Then we could have triggered momentum. Not a problem for me. Hi, momentum. Oh, Heinrich is up. <laughs> Never mind, we're fine.
Momentum! I'll see our foes obliterated. But of course, Lord Captain. Nothing stands against me. I won't object to it. Consider yourselves breached and cleared. And I think we're good. They might land a dink or two before the end of combat, but there's no way I think they can beat us, unless there's another wave. Let's get some more momentum going. I see how we can do this. Rejoice in battle. As the Emperor commands, I act. Strike is a prayer. Grenadiers out. I am his will made manifest. You know, I was hoping she'd finish them off, but that is fine. How much damage could that one guy possibly do? Cassie, why don't you hang back? But we will get Rhett in there. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, wait. There we go. Your Lordship. Emperor, preserve us. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine. But I can't say the same for the attackers. Praise the throne. If you would please follow me, I will personally escort you to the governor, where you will have the protection of walls and guards. Actually, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to have a look around before you have a chance to destroy evidence. Not that I'm necessarily saying you or your boss are behind this, but, you know, just doing my due diligence. All right, let's loot these corpses and have a look around. Plus 10 parry, not bad. Though I suppose it really comes down to what slot that fits into. Hand and bracer slots are hotly contested on our melee guys. Oh, that reminds me. We did actually pull a unique item from the, um, from the Plague Bearer encounter. This right here. It was actually the first knife we looked at when we were looting. Not that it's really much to write home about. It's another one of those items that's kind of compromised by the trade-off. You gain bleeding, but you lose all of the other standard buffs that would come with a knife. Not really something I see us using, but I'm holding on to it for now.
challenge for me. Oh, right. Servo Skull's yelling about us now. That's fun. <laughs> it's about time. Okay, so before we head up, let's have a look around the rest of the courtyard here. The most effective representatives of the local flora are assembled in the flower bed. Unfamiliar fruits are ripening on the carefully pruned plants. The most effective? That's, that's a weird way to put it. I hope they find a way to make that servo skull slightly less distracting. I noticed something. Sealed containers marked with the familiar insignia of the Munitorum and additional seals of a forge world unknown to you. The crates contain high-grade weapons, likely made to order. Really now? Oh, hotshot las gun. That one I know. That was an extremely rare good in Necromunda. Wow, look at that. That is way better than a normal LAS gun. Well, I mean, damage is a bit on the low side. Definitely takes a hit to range, but... Much higher penetration, much better rate of fire. And it ignores part of the target's dodge, making it easier to hit at short and medium range. How is that compared to our Orthlock? Okay, slightly higher damage, much better penetration. Half the rate of fire, though. Kind of tempting to give that to Cassia, too. She's not exactly getting much use out of that marksman. But I will think on that. I think it'll really come down to whether or not we've already invested in any auto gun specific perks for Rat. Which uh, I honestly can't remember if we have. We've, we've had so many level ups already. Alright, let's check out the upper area. We are keeping constant watch. I'm sure you are, now that the trouble's already passed and the bad guys are already dead, but keep up the good work. Oh boy, this is actually kind of overwhelming. You know what? Let's uh, let's go chat up the leader. Figure out the basics of what's going on here, before we wander off too far. None shall stand in my way. Yep, and see, there's the Eldar Ranger, Sans mask. Now we just have to track down that Space Wolf. Did you hear? A Vexen Goldino caught her husband with the Servitors again. Your surprise sounds terribly feigned. Are you truly surprised to learn that the head of the Goldino family is seeking solace in such predictable places? That is super gross. Indeed, I have not seen many places that flaunt such luxury. If you were to scrape all the gilding from every temple on footfall, it would still be less than there is here. Follow my lead. Hmm. 
Upon seeing you, the guard at the door lets out a frightened yelp and doubles over in a low bow. Your Lordship, the most honorable rogue traitor von Valencius. The governor is awaiting you in her office, where she is protected by walls and guards. Would you prefer to meet with her alone or with your entourage? Well, given that someone just tried to kill me, I think I'll keep my entourage with me, if that's all the same to you. Oh, she's got like an aura. Vicenza Janus Vyat Ab Aram Af Caronis is furiously swiping at a data slate, issuing commands into a gilded vox. Upon seeing you, she hurriedly puts away her devices, smooths her skirt, and drops into a deep curtsy. Your Lordship, accept my abject apologies for the aberrant actions that ruined the reception. Even in my worst nightmares, I could never have imagined... No, no, think nothing of it. I was actually starting to think that that was just a Coronis tradition. Besides, it was quite enjoyable. The woman standing next to Vistenza laughs delicately, but after a sharp sidelong look from the governor, she resumes her air of deferential sorrow. Oh no, your lordship, I would never dare to deliberately endanger the heir to the illustrious von Valencius dynasty. However, I, I cannot but express my joy that you took some pleasure in what happened. Well, I can't claim all the credit. One of your guardsmen actually picked a few off before I could get to them. Excellent shot, that one. Ah, you must be referring to your Alette, our chief ally in the struggle against the rebels. I have turned a blind eye to her horrific mutations given the undoubted advantages she brings. You see, your Liette comes from the local degenerate stock of this world, and knows Janus like the back of her hand, so she has provided several leads as to where we can find bases and secret storehouses. Although I admit that at times I am tempted to send her away from the estate, her unnaturalness means that speaking with her always leaves me feeling uneasy. Such a gaunt, unfeminine figure, and so tall... Yeah, also, she's obviously an Eldar Ranger, and uh, I'm guessing her assistant there is an unsanctioned Psyker with, like, force field powers. Heinrichs's expression shifts. Did I hear you correctly, Governor Vyat? You have a mysterious mutant on your estate at this very moment, one of prodigious height, slight build, and with a supernatural talent for shooting... Did the arrival of this helper never give you pause for thought? Allow me to make myself clear. To refuse your let's help in our circumstances would have been incredibly rash. Yes, mutants are creatures abhorrent to the Emperor and they should be exterminated, but sometimes humanity makes exceptions for those who can serve the Imperium. I am not concerned that your aid is a mutant. I am far more concerned that she may be nothing of the sort. Heinrichs turns to you. Rogue trader, I would like to meet this helper of Governor Viat's without delay. Out of professional interest. Yep, here we go. If you wish to speak to your let, you will find her outside, alone most likely. She prefers to keep her distance from others. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet. So tell me, Governor, what exactly is happening here on my planet? Several months ago, uprisings broke out on Janus. I was not even notified at first. Griping worms are for guards to worry about. Alas, I only learned of what was happening after the miscreants began targeting noble families. Mistenza shakes her head. And then it became apparent that what the Administratum's accounts had referred to as unrest were in fact organized attacks on infrastructure and society leaders. They have already brought 13 agri-complexes to a halt and have now moved on to assassination attempts. 
My guards are doggedly tracking down the rebels, but their leaders are slipping from our grasp yet again. I see. And tell me, Governor, can Janus still fulfill its foodstuff quotas under the current conditions? I risk angering you, your lordship, but this is nothing compared to shamelessly deceiving you. Let us consider the situation dispassionately. Even the most talented logistics experts of the Administratum are unable to guarantee stable tithes when shuttles are wary of landing at the spaceport, and the terrified peasants are indulging a dangerous minority within their ranks. Until the usual order of things is restored on Janus, any trade is nigh impossible." Considering what has occurred, your visit is a true blessing. You see, Janus does not have its own fleet. We could organize a planet-wide search if we had ships at our disposal. Ships like yours, your lordship. Perhaps you will find a way to support your subjects in their hour of need? I'm sure even approximate coordinates would be sufficient to have the ground forces and ship's crew work together to hunt down the enemy. Interesting, interesting. I'm getting some strange vibes from her, especially with that defensive psyker near her. I'm, what I'm assuming is a defensive psyker. The aura kind of makes it obvious. Trust me, Governor, I have every intention of getting to the bottom of this. I'm sure the rebels will have some interesting things to say to the master of their world. Vistenza inclines her head. I am immeasurably grateful for your assistance, your lordship. Mm-hmm. If any of those who had attacked the estate had survived, then perhaps they could have been a valuable source of information. But you made an example of them for the rest of the foolish rabble. Vistenza glances at the box. Incidentally, I, I did overhear the guards talking about some kind of stranger in the area. Besides that, we still do not know who let those reprobates into the estate. The person who did it might also know something. I, as well as my retinue, are at your service. My secretary is checking the staff as we speak and removing all traces of the attack from the estate. An esteemed Magos who is responsible for agronomic efforts on the planet is also here. He happened to be visiting this week to deliver his personal report. And, of course, there is my aid in the war against the rebels, Yurlet. I have no doubt she will be delighted to share her knowledge of Janus with your lordship. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be the case, but uh, we will see how that plays out. <laughs> I've brokered a deal with Footfall Station. They lie on the verge of starvation. Given the current circumstances, can Janus supply the people there with provisions? Uh, yes and no, your lordship. If the question is, can such an expansive and fertile world such as this one feed a few thousand void rats? Of course it can. We lose more provisions to gnawing pests every cycle than those on Footfall could eat in their entire lives. But can we ship said provisions to Footfall? Not a chance. Any cargo ship that leaves the surface will be a target for attack. The rebels will not hesitate to bring it down sending flaming debris over the capital. Our silos could become targets for sabotage. Food could be poisoned or mined. The logistics of transporting supplies to Footfall will only be possible once the uprising has been completely crushed. Yes, that is very convenient for you. So tell me, Countess, who's this person next to you? One of my ladies-in-waiting, Amelia. Amelia performs secretarial duties and helps me to remain in constant contact with those families who are most responsible for the productivity and prosperity of Janus. I trust my advisors implicitly, and over time Amelia has become not merely a faithful companion, but almost my shadow. Losing her would be like losing my right hand. Miss Denza laughs and gives Amelia an encouraging nod. Amelia drops into a low curtsy. To bathe in the light of your greatness is a true honor, rogue trader. Yes, yes, your fealty is noted. So tell me, Countess, tell me about my planet. 
Vistenza leans forward. Janus is a remarkable world, both in terms of its vast potential and in terms of the work that was carried out to transform it into an agri-world. Halcyat has ruled on Janus for many generations, and each new governor has, without fail, contributed to the planet's taming. This world was once a wild planet, full of xeno-beasts and utterly unsuitable for growing anything. To this day, despite our best efforts, Janus regularly rebels against us. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and emergence of new pests and weeds that invade the arable land. Sometimes I cannot help but think that this world is endowed with consciousness, the consciousness of a capricious and stubborn child, who likes to spoil everything that we have achieved. And what exactly do we grow here on Janus? Mainly, helican flint corn and red turnip. Apart from that, in the southern hemisphere we have set aside vast tracts of land for the Grox population. And, of course, I cannot fail to mention the several thousand acres of tilled land given over to cultivating fermentable fruit, for personal use and limited export. Countess, are you drinking my profits? Can't say I appreciate that. I must say, Countess, I, I really expected this planet to be more... developed than it appears to be. What exactly do you do here for entertainment? If you are asking about those of our circle, then let me assure you, there are enough noble families on world to keep boredom at bay. I frequently host guests, your lordship, and my servants arrange suitable entertainments. From parlor concerts to private executions of traitors who break imperial law, Oh my, yes, that does... that does sound... entertaining. Well, Countess, this has all been utterly fascinating, but uh, I should really get away from you. I'm sure you understand. I suspect the residents of an estate like this could buy footfall in its entirety and use it as a seasonal residence. Yeah, yeah, it really does kind of uh, get to the point of opulence where where you do get the impression they've literally got more money than they know what to do with. Which, honestly, given the generational nature of the governorship here, just makes me all that much less prone to trusting the Countess. I have to imagine that she's chafing at the idea that we're here to take charge of her planet. Such an important occasion. A visit from a rogue trader. Marred by such an unpleasant incident. Ah, it wasn't that bad. I've had tougher fights. I won't tolerate weakness. Alright, let's poke around a bit and track down some clues. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't have uh, any on those rebels. I really thought we'd find a hint at what they were trying to accomplish. And there's your let, but we'll hold off on that for now. A new challenge for me. Vinzalex. Draped in a red cloak, the Magos' body barely looks human. Wires, tubes, and metal manipulators turn him into a whimsical machine while implants hide his face behind a sinister mask. The tech priest intermittently dictates something in Technolingua to the servo skull floating next to him, but at your approach he falls silent and offers a reserved bow. Greetings, your lordship. Lex Mechanic Vinzalex. How may I serve you? Pascal and the Lex Mechanic exchange trills of binary greetings, the series of sounds issued by Vinzelek sounds much longer and more deferential than those of Pascal. Uh, tell me, Tech Priest, just how many of you and your ilk are there on my planet? According to the data stored in my cogitator, all infrastructure nodes for food harvesting and processing have their own contingent of Technomats. The total number amounts to 253. Correction. Based on the latest data, the figure is 211 units. 
Right, right. That makes sense. The rebels are deliberately targeting the infrastructure, tech priests included. And what exactly is it that you are trying to accomplish here on Janus? The tech priest's mechanical voice comes from the speaker on his neck. By the order of the Adeptus Mechanicus, I have been entrusted with the management of the Adeptus Administratum in order to catalog agronomic data and analyze information about the planet during the process of subjugating it to the will of the Imperium. Be blessed, Tech Brother. Your diligence and the diligence of those like you turns anarchy into order and bestows classification to knowledge. One of Pascal's mechadendrites slightly touches the Lex Mechanic's body. The tech priest bows respectfully in return, clearly a little startled. So, tech priest, uh, Vinzelex, tell me more about my planet. Initializing report. The planet's soil possesses a unique composition suitable for the re-engineering of the planet and the mass production of foodstuffs. Significant cultivation of the Eastern Hemisphere with the aim of improving production processes and logistics operations. Traces of Xeno activity that do not pose an immediate threat to ongoing operations. Undesirable pathologies of flora and fauna have been noted, which may pose a threat in the short term. Traces of Xeno activity, you say? How peculiar. According to data obtained during initial scans, ruined structures of non-human origin were noted in different sectors of the planet, but I did not have the administrative capacity to study them in more detail. For now, I must defer the quest for knowledge. The Lex Mechanic speaks the last words with distinct envy, his eyes fixed on Magos Hanamon. Oh, right, yeah, I guess that's why Pascal's with us, then. Interesting. And you also said something about the pathologies of the local flora and fauna? Genetic and chemical pathologies, your lordship. Harmless species mutate and become aggressive, while plants change their chemical composition and become poisonous. This is happening more and more often, and if you do not take action, the ecosystem of the world will be irreparably disrupted. That certainly sounds deliberate. The changes may be artificial. Has the possibility been considered that someone is manipulating the ecosystem to reduce our living space? Not at all, Venerable Magos. I, our brothers from the Magos biologists, are humble workers, not warriors. They could not have come up with a thought of such a militant nature. The mind must be open to all forms of knowledge. I order you to commence a check. In the event that your account of the indolence of their minds is confirmed, I will petition for the appropriate penance. Interesting. It is often what seems to be insignificant anomalies like these that lead to greater trouble. Yeah, yeah, I think we're on the same wavelength here, Heinrichs. Tell me... What exactly is the governor doing to deal with these undesirable pathologies? I have analyzed the genome of the affected species and am currently developing suppressor genes to make the planet's organisms resistant to pathology. But so far, I have not been able to solve the problem. Further exploration of the planet would perhaps speed up these processes, but the administrative apparatus has imposed a ban on expeditions that are not directly aimed at improving production. Gosh, I gotta say, I feel like making it so the planet doesn't actively try to kill us would probably improve production, but what do I know? Thank you, Vinzelex. That will be all. As you wish. Okay, so it sounds like those ruins are probably Eldar. And the local Eldar, like your let are probably trying to discourage the settlers from expanding into certain areas. Hence the strange mutations in the local flora and fauna. But where do the rebels come in? And why are the Eldar against them?
It's about time. We've still got five minutes on the clock, so let's find at least one more clue out here. Not your let, though. We're, we're saving her for next time. I imagine that's going to be a whole thing. Especially with Heinrichs in our party. That, that might get awkward. It is an honor for us to serve such exalted guests, your lordship. Uh-huh. Well, you are certainly serving something. Keep, keep up the good work. <laughs> Hearing your footsteps, the elderly servant grabs an injector and stabs it into his arm. The area around the needle immediately starts turning black. You're too late, Vyats dogs. I am the master of my own fate. But when he gets a better look at you, the man drops the injector in astonishment and seems poised to prostrate himself on the floor before you. It's you, your lordship. The god emperor must have brought you here. I beg you, help the rebels and save Janus. He doubles up, hugging himself, and is racked by coughing that leaves his lips wet with blood. Forgive me, your lordship. If only I'd known it was you. My eyes deceived me. We have little time now, but I swear, I'll tell you everything. Looking closely at the old man, the tech priest utters, Nerve toxin. The inevitable cessation of vital functions is expected in no less than 60 seconds. Silent clicks emitted by the visor indicate an ongoing picked recording. Classy, but understandable. Very well, old man. Say your piece. But be quick about it. You don't have much time. In the name of the Golden Throne, your lordship, show mercy on the humble workers, the salt of Janus. Save them. Estens of Yad, the untouchable governor and the leader of the nobility, is creating something monstrous behind closed doors. She uses the Imperium's interests as a smokescreen and purports to be a scholar, but... But her actions... Her actions are poisoning our planet. Did you know that the settlements that fail to pay their due tithes on time have been allowed to pay with people instead? They even deliver them to order, sometimes old folks, sometimes children. He lowers his voice to a whisper and leans toward you. I've seen those people. I've seen them being delivered to the estate, and then they're never seen or heard from again. They go into the secret rooms and they don't come out again, your lordship. Ever. Fresh meat to entertain the nobility. Some things never change, whether you're on my planet or anywhere in the Righteous Imperium. Not really sure you're in the best position to judge right now, Adira. The old servant lets out a moan. The dark stain on his arm seems to creep through his veins until his arms and neck are a latticework of black. The servant's breath quickens and becomes irregular. Tell me more about these secret rooms. Hidden chambers deep within the palace. I've never been inside, thankfully. The servants who are allowed in, the ones the governor trusts, they change. She changes them. Pretties them up defiles them. You accuse the rogue traitor's appointed governor of heresy. If your words are false, they themselves are tantamount to heresy. But if what you say is true, if it's true, then your sacrifice will be to your credit, my good man. Argenta utters these last words with impassioned conviction. I swear I'm not lying. Pray for me, holy sister, for me and for Janus. The servant shakes and coughs violently. I'm not sure I'll last long enough to answer all your questions, but this is a very long 60 seconds. Quickly then, what are the settlements? I'll tell you exactly what I was told by the people who contacted me. These tithes. Some settlements have already switched to paying with people. 
They say that amenable settlements get special treatment from the governor's dogs. They arrange for medicine to be supplied to the settlement, then security, and then they completely isolate them. All contact between those inside the settlement and the outside world is cut off. One lad managed to get out. He's the one who told me all this, that the people are rotting alive in there. Strange growths, yellow eyes, stinking like dead bodies. The worst-looking ones are rounded up and taken away. The fellow who escaped, he seemed fine. But within a couple of days of the rebels picking him up, he started seeing monsters instead of people. They had to lock him up, away from other folks, the poor sod. A and then he... His wrists. Yeah, yeah, don't have to finish that thought, thank you. The old man starts to convulse, indicating that he is close to death. He raises his already unseeing eyes to you. Your lordship, if you'll permit a dying man to make one last request, don't tell anyone that I was the one who unlocked the doors. If you do, they'll... they'll go after my family, my home. As long as what you have told me is true, I promise. Please, save us. Save Janus. The servant rasps violently and collapses on his side, racked with convulsions. Uh, I think that man actually exploded, but, uh... <laughs> well, that is very unfortunate. That also gives us a much better picture of what's going on here. I'm suspecting Slanesh or Nurgle worship. Slanesh because she pretties up her servant somehow. But Nurgle because of the the strange affliction of the settlements. Lorena Anaris' estate will be liquidated any day now. I've got my eye on that far-flung country manor of theirs. Get a load of this. My eyes hurt just looking at all the marble and gold. The bosses back on Lara, my homeworld. They lived in mansions like this. Did you see the mutant wipe out that target? Our guys near the governor just stood there catching flies, and she'd already blown his brains out. Nothing notable in the loot. Victory awaits. Lyra, that is the name of the rock you crawled off? I will make a note of it. Another world requiring a dose of cleansing fire. You are delightful, Argenta. Hmph. It seems to me Lady Viant is only interested in settlements that are overrun with peasants. One can only guess as to the reason. Oh my goodness, everyone needs to stop talking for a second. The fountain is an expensive toy for the nobility. Pure water is currently bubbling from it, but additional pipes on it indicate the presence of separate siphons for sparkling wine and other beverages. Well, that's just unsanitary. We have three completely different conversations going on around us. Owlcat really needs to get this background chatter under control. Tell me about it. She gives me the creeps. She's terrifying to look at, she talks funny, and she knows her way around a gun. Come to think of it, I've, I've never seen that kind of weapon before. I wonder where she got it. Maybe like an eavesdrop prompting? Or maybe convert the uh, cross-companion banter, like we had with Adira and Argenta there, into actual full dialogue segments. That way you don't actually end up missing it amongst all of the other background chatter, or just moving around and interacting with objects. Dearest, hold your tongue! You have an audience! See, like, that guy acknowledged that they know there are people listening in on their conversation. 
I do think, um, I do think, like, eavesdropping prompts, you know, like a skill, not necessarily a skill check, but an interaction icon to trigger that particular NPC conversation would probably make more sense than just having it automatically fire as you walk by. Anyway, we are out of time, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time, as we get to know our newest companion. Assuming Heinrichs doesn't kill her. See you then! Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Giemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Biatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you too would like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description. I won't tolerate weakness.